So a lot of people were asking, how did I do those lights that look kind of like Tron racers? Well, basically, if you saw in the beginning of the video, this is just some white wire loom. And I just stuffed the pixels inside here. Now, it is kind of tough. I've had a couple trying to make sure I had it one side in this crack of the sidewalk and then one I had like up on the grass I do prefer it on the grass because then you know when you're walking down the other sidewalk you can see more of you know the lights or whatever it's not covered by because of the height of the sidewalk to the grass you can't see it now the other one down here and just I use some before I jump over this, I did use some little fiberglass, a little post, you know, the ones you mark your driveway with. I just cut them because the fiberglass isn't going to rot or whatever, and I can still use them year after year and not rust because of the high humidity I have in this area. Now, it does kind of look funky. I gotta say it looks like it's a little bit, but um, yeah, it. I use some some waterproof connections, a little. 12 volt DC ones and um, this like all the automotive ones and they use some waterproof proof connectors here to you know keep the water out of it this isn't submerged in water and I've been using this for a few years now and haven't had any issues so I'll continue to use it and um, now these are down in the crack Luckily, this sidewalk is somewhat straight. That's down here. Now, the other one over here, there's a little zigzag to it. I really didn't like over there. So that's why I also wanted to put it on the grass. I guess someone couldn't figure out how to make a straight sidewalk however many years ago. So up here, I do just have some regular 18-3 wire that runs off of my power supply. Now, this is simplified a tremendous amount compared to what I used to do with a few Node MCUs and everything because I also used to do these wooden poles here as well with lights for Christmas. I may do that again, I'm just not sure. This is a way overkill. I think this is a 20 amp. Yeah, 20 amp, 12 volt power supply. I only got about 500 pixels on this right now. I don't have any power injection, but I will probably for Christmas because I run some brighter stuff and different schemes. I will run another power injection down the sidewalk and probably eh, right in here somewhere, I'll inject another 12 fresh volts. And that's pretty much what it is. You know, basically all the pixels down here are getting, or you know, drinking the voltage out. And, you know, you get your voltage drop. And so you need to give it a fresh supply of juice down here to continue on and be bright enough down the sidewalk. So what am I using? Of course, and this made it a lot easier. Just have a little project box. I don't have anything waterproofed up here because, yeah, if I do get water up here that I have bigger problems... This is under the front porch here. And I'm using the LEDs board, the larger 12 volt. This is the two channel one. And the, see there is a 10 amp fuse on there. It's an ESP32, it does run WLED. And I'm just using the two channels off it. I may add the additional channels, but it might just be easier. I just drop another board with two channels throw it into the 12 volt power supply and call it a day. I do have, you can kind of see them up in here, there's one, two, and there's a third and fourth above me. Those are some down lights, some four inch down lights. I do run the Tasmoda on those with the DDP Scheme 5, I believe, so I can actually address these with the same controller here. It's pretty slick. I'll show some lighting schemes of that towards the end of the video just so you can get an idea of what we're doing. So that's pretty much it, and I'll jump into some of the stuff in WLED, how I set some of that up, if you'd like to see that part too. 
So to give a little more information on how this is all wired up and everything, Caleb made a cool little diagram of the LEDs board. Now just zooming in a little more so we can see things, it's not confusing at all. As you can see, it's a pretty simple layout. There's the power supply I showed. Of course, you need mains power of some sort. And that converts the 120 or the 240, depending what country you're in, down to 12 volts or that 24. I'm using 12 volts. I do prefer the 12 volts because it just allows the voltage to go further without dropping. Yeah, 5 volts, you're going to be doing injections all the time. And then, of course, this board is 12 volts and above. Their smaller one does the 5 volts that you want to do the 5 volts there. Now, a little closer view, you can see the power feeds in the board and out the board. That way, you're utilizing the two fuses here. So, potentially, if something does short out or whatever on any of the LED channels, then it should pop the fuse. You're more than welcome to put some smaller fuses if you want to go that route. But I do believe they come with just the little 10 amp fuses. And these are, I just call them little automotive blade fuses. You can get them pretty much anywhere locally, at least you can in the U.S. But he does have some spares if you need them just in case. Now, Caleb's shown in this example, and I do thank you, Caleb, for putting this together. He's showing the LED strip and doing the pixels. It's pretty much the same. You know, it's just addressable LEDs just the look of what you want to do. I use the pixels. Now I'm using the two channels. So that's down both sides of the sidewalk and it splits out. So that's that left and that right. And it feeds off of this one board. And then you just daisy chain your pixels together. It's pretty simple to wire up, especially with this board. Now, if you're curious, you want to go find the board no there's no affiliate thing or anything i don't make anything off of it which is totally fine i honestly want to support the little guys making this stuff it's pretty awesome let me turn my dark reader off so we can actually see a little better you can go get them on his website which i will leave the link down below and of course you can find it on my website as well now what software powers all this is wled WLED's an awesome open source project. You may be saying, well, what about ESP Home and what about Tasmoda? Both of those can support those addressable LEDs, but just not at the level of flexibility and effects and everything that you can do with WLED. It's not a whole video about WLED because I could probably talk about WLED for over 20 minutes and still not be done. There's a ton of stuff inside WLED. It comes pre-installed on those LEDs boards, so you don't have to install it or whatever. You just got to take it out the box, power it up. It makes an access point, and you can put it right on your network. Get it on your network. It looks something like this. Now, you need to go through and set the LED preferences up. Now, I went through. You can see I have an LED strip on channel output 1. GPIO 16, you may be saying, what's that 16? Well, actually written on the board, I think it's on the back on this version, it'll actually show what GPIO you have to put written right on the back of the board. Now, I didn't go through and count the LEDs. What I did just as a little cheat was I just put it on a solid or some type of, you know, pretty much solid animation and kept changing the length until I got to exactly where I needed to be on each one. So you can see I've got 256, a little shorter on the other one, I've got that 295. Eventually I probably will want to run around to the other side, that'd be pretty cool. I, I Just some of the stuff I would need to do for in future projects because you always want more. Now then down to this part here, you may be saying, what's this DDP? And no, it's not some dirty term. It's, think of it just as it's addressing those as pixels on different segments. So I can do a different animation. So this is all from that one board. And it runs those two power strips, plus it runs my four lights. The four lights, I have them up in a segment so I can run animation that kind of makes sense in those larger four inch down lights. Now, those 4-inch downlights, they do have Tasmoda on them, 
And but there's a couple different ways. And, and no, I don't. I'm gonna tell you right now. Those are downlights I've had for years, and I converted them when they were in the ESP world. So you really can't do. I don't think at this time like the Libertuya stuff or whatnot. So you will need to get is say a Tasmoda one or do ESP Home. Now. If you're curious on how to set up the DDP stuff, it's pretty simple. Now you may be saying, well, Travis, why are you linking me to another damn store? Well, cloud free is just where it's at. And I do suggest that, you know, they are really reputable and they get good stuff you can get from them, but check out his blog, come down towards the blog and he's got a pair Tasmoda with W lead for lighting effects article. And you know, I will leave the link down below. It's got all the step-by-step -step instructions on configuring W lead and doing Tasmoda. And you can see it's not hard to do. I probably talked more than the words he already put on the article explaining it. So you can see here, I have the segment. That's the LEDs. Of course, if we go back just to show it's like 551, I had to play with it a little bit, which is much easier on your phone. See 551, two, three, and four. That's gonna be those four down lights. I did not put my porch lights in there. I found it was a little bit better with having those solid. I, that Cause you see those directly and I like indirect lighting. It just indirect lighting is just so much better in my opinion on things. I kind of don't like to do I don't know, I call them the vape shops where they got the vape around the windows where you can see all the little LEDs. Uh, that doesn't fly too well with uh, my significant other. But in that segment, you got 551 to 555. Then, of course, this is just one segment. And then it does get kind of confusing in WLED where you're picking the different effects. I currently have this one set on running. And I had to find a yellow and a green that look kind of decent. And then on this, if you want to pick on segment two, you have to select those. And I did put those as oscillate, I believe. So when I click those segments, you can see I have those as oscillate and I've got a purple and an orange on those. And that does those, I call them the Tron racers. Now someone had a good name for those and they do look pretty cool. Now, the last piece, there's not going to be any home assistant with this. Now, you can because they do natively support WLED inside of home assistant, but I'm more of an MQTT person with node red. So I did configure it as MQTT. Now, like most flows in my stuff, they end up kind of messy, but I've had this one set up for years. So I've been changing it just as time goes on. And I, you know, if, if it's not broke, I don't fix it. And during the seasonal stuff, I don't use a whole lot, but basically I have it just turn on at sunset and then at 10 p.m. I turn off the animations and then I cycle stuff back to regular night lights. And I just have my color set. You, I did have one in here when I was doing even in odd days, but I had the color set for like that pumpkin and the porch lights. And then I turn on the WLED board that, LEDs board, turn that on. And then I also send that scheme five, which is to start those in DDP. So they'll start listening to WLED. That's those four porch lights. And then of course, I guess at 10 o'clock, it turns everything else off. So pretty simple flow. It does it all through MQTT. I know it looks kind of crazy, but it's really just based off of the sunset and then the kickoff at, at 10 PM. Now, if I was doing all this again, Hey, what would I change and what would I do differently? is of course i did buy those led pixels i bought those several years ago i don't think they had all those cool little connectors that would come on them i probably would stick with and i know one more has said on the live stream he was saying like x connect is one of the ones he would go with i'll trust his judgment so if i was doing it i'll go through and buy all of my led pixels with those x connect those look damn slick. You just take and screw them together and go. And then they even have those little power injection pigtails as well. So then I would have to worry about any of the little connectors and everything. I still would do the wire loom, but probably because whatever contractor made that sidewalk couldn't figure out how to use a chalk line, I would move, you know, the sidewalk has got some nasty jagged edges and it's weird. I guess they had issues with the form or something years and years ago. 
is I would want to move it back up on my grass and I'll just throw a simple chalk line down just so I can run it straight. Put it on the grass makes it a little easier to see that way it's not tucked in that crack of the sidewalk where the grass is at. So that'll pretty much do it for this one. And you know, I will leave all the links to all the things down there. It's pretty cool to see some of the, the different setups everybody has. So definitely come check us out in Discord. And we'd love to see all the different projects everybody is showing out there and all the cool pictures. And sometimes I'll even share them in the outros of videos and different things. So I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers, YouTube subscribers. Definitely couldn't do it without you and bring projects to the channel all the time. And... Thank you.